Y'all can do better than that. Y'all can do better than that. Who's excited to be at Radiant Revival tonight? Right, that yeah. was okay. It was okay. But I feel like okay. to get them really excited, we got to do a competition. Because yes. I feel like Radiant's Always. a competitive church, right? Any competitive people in the room? 100%. Yes. Hands down. Hands down. All right, so we're going to do a competition. All right. I'm going to take this half of the room. Okay, I'll take the better half. That's rude. That's it. That's okay. I'll take the best half of the room. Oh. <laughs> and we're going to say who's excited, and we're going to judge who's louder. You yeah, ready? I love it. Yeah, ready. You Are want you us sure? to go first? You can, because second can is best, so okay, it's okay. Okay, this side. Are we ready to go? Are we ready to go? Loudest side. All right, ready. Let me hear it. Are you excited to be at Radio Revival? <laughs> Hands no, no, no. down. Are Hands you guys down. ready? Okay, who's excited to be at Radio Revival 9 too? Let me hear you. Have y'all done it yet? We're still waiting for y'all. That's rude. That's um, but that's okay, because we're one it. church, multiple locations. Oh, so one go. more time, everybody who's excited to be here tonight, all together. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's pretty here. good. Hey, we're so excited y'all are here tonight. We haven't had a chance to meet you yet. My name is Sarah. I get to serve here on the team. You want to introduce yourself? And my name is John, and I also get to serve here on the team right here at Radiant. And just excited to be here. It's going to be a fun night. It is going to be so fun. So we have a couple announcements first. We have church merch, Come guys. On. Come on. Anybody repping their merch already from last night? Yeah, who got Anyone? something last night? Show of hands. Who bought something you. last night? Go ahead, yes. model it. Go ahead, Come give us a little on. model turn. Susanna's Love already crushing it, it up Love here. It. I got the hat. You got I got the, this incredible polo. The dad Come on, shirt. Somebody. I like it. Yes, doing it. We also have some Radiant Kids shirts in kids' sizes. If you haven't gotten one yet, be sure you get They're so cute. Kids and church merch is just the cutest. So if you haven't gotten your merch, it'll be available outside after service. And the awkward announcement. Yes. The water one. The water one. Yes. Yes. Only water allowed Only inside water. the room. I know. We're a big coffee church, but that's I okay. Know. We're just going to have to have so much energy with the Holy Spirit this week. We're not even going to yes. miss coffee. It's going to be Look, all okay. The Lord is all you should be thirsting after. Mm, come on, come somebody, on somebody. Okay? That's come a word on. for somebody. That's it. <laughs> hey, who is here for night number one? Let me hear you. Who is this your, anyone's first night this week being here? Okay. Come on. Okay, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So actually, if you weren't here, we got you covered. We want to give you a little sneak peek of last night. So production, can you roll that video from last night? The Holy Spirit was going to come upon them and they were going to be witnesses to Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Ooh, look at the power of the gospel and the power of the Holy Spirit. That's something that started with 120 people in the upper room, got all the way around the world. Let me pause right there and tell somebody, don't despise small beginnings. When the Holy Spirit empowers something small, it might look small, it might start small, but it ain't going to stay small. The gospel has the power to go around the world. Don't despise what God is doing right here at Radiant Church. This is just the beginning. What if God wants to do 20 campuses? What if he wants to do things that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard? Because when you are full of the Holy Spirit, you don't have a clue what God would do. Amen. If you missed last night, this is your reminder. Do not miss one night of Radiant Revival. So we're going to be popping around the auditorium this week. We're with some of my friends here tonight. I'm so excited. Okay, so what did God speak to you last night during the message? Um, he spoke to me not to fall asleep spiritually okay. and to be around people who are going to wake you up if you do. Okay, so are you giving us permission if you fall asleep tonight to just, perfect, whatever it takes? Y'all heard it, whatever it takes. All right, what was last night, what meant something to you? Um, she has a buy, oh, notes over here, hold on. She said, I'm ready. Do you have the capacity to receive what God has to pour out? Yeah. That's a whole word right there. I'm really surprised none of y'all said from the windows to the fall, to the fall. And I'm going to stop right there. All right. John, I'm going to throw it to you. No, I don't even know how to follow that window to the wall. That's, we're going to move on. I'm here with my very good friends. And uh, why don't you tell everybody your name? Cheyenne. Cheyenne. You're here. It sounds like everybody loves you. That's incredible. Come on. Come on. Y'all give it up for Cheyenne, everybody. Come on. Woo! 
Love it. Best of the best right here. Cheyenne, you're here. You made it tonight, too. Come on, somebody. What are you most excited about tonight? I am most excited to continue expecting. Wow. Continue expecting. I love it. I love it. Tonight's going to be awesome. I'm going to throw it back to you, Sarah. Guys, tonight is going to be absolutely amazing. God is just getting started. So really quick, I'm going to ask you to pull out your phone. Everyone pull out your phone. Pull out your phone. I said pull out your phone in church, and we're not at the notes part yet. So come on, somebody. Go to YouTube. Get this link for the service. Like pull up Radiant Church's YouTube channel and text it to someone right now. There's a lot of people that couldn't make it in the room either because of parking or time or just the traffic from West St. Pete all the way over here. Text this link to someone who needs to be in the room tonight. Because even if you're not here in the room online, we see you. We believe God has a plan for you. He is speaking to you. So as you text that link, I'm going to challenge you. In Matthew 7, verse 7, it says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find knock and the door will be open to you so if you don't have anything you've asked God for yet this week ask him because it says ask and you will receive seek and you will find we are believing tonight for big things this isn't just a cute little service we're putting on where we come up here and talk about merch and do something fun this is revival happening in Tampa Bay we are believing that as we're seeking and asking and knocking that God has a plan for for your life tonight, that God has a plan for every person in this room, for the people that are still trying to park, come on somebody, for the people that are watching online. God is not done. It's night two. We've got three more nights. So text that link to someone. Make sure you are excited and expecting for big things. And if you haven't written down what you're asking God for, proof of expectation. Write it down in a notes app right now. Say, God, I'm believing you for this. So as you write that down, as you invite your friends, check out this video.
Listen, listen. Turn to your neighbor and say, hey, neighbor. Say, I hope you came ready to praise the Lord tonight. Find another neighbor and say, hey, neighbor, hey, neighbor. I hope you came ready to worship the King of Kings tonight. I hope you came to worship the Lord of Lords tonight. Listen, it's revival, so listen, we do things a little bit out of the norm, and I'm going to invite you to get uncomfortable. I'm going to invite you down here to the front. If you want to come and worship down front, come on, come on, we're going to worship together tonight as one big family. Come on, come on, let's just lift our hands, let's take a moment to welcome the Lord in this place. Come on, lift up your hands and say, Lord, you're welcome. Say, Lord, we're ready for you. Whatever you want to do tonight, we're ready for you, Jesus. However you want to move, we say yes, Lord.
greater than King Jesus. There's no one greater than King Jesus. Come on, can we lift our hands and can you tell the Lord, you are the King of my life? You are the King of my life. We crown you King tonight. Be seated on the thrones of our hearts tonight, Lord.
the name of Jesus is above every name. The name of Jesus is above cancer. The name of Jesus is above depression. The name of Jesus is above suicide. The name of Jesus is above diabetes. The name of Jesus is above Alzheimer's. The name of Jesus is above dementia. I don't care what name it is. There's nothing greater than the name of Jesus. Come on, lift up that name tonight, Jesus. Tell them tonight, you're worthy, worthy. You're worthy, you're worthy. You're worthy, you're worthy. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is worthy to be praised. Your name is worthy to be praised. Your name is worthy to be Come on, press in tonight, church. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy, you're worthy. I can't say it enough, 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 you're worthy. You are. 
last time. Come on. Worthy. Every hand lifted to the King tonight. You deserve. Worthy is. Can I encourage you? That it doesn't matter what you're facing. It doesn't change his worthiness. It doesn't matter what you're walking through. It doesn't matter how hard it is. It doesn't change his worthiness. The Bible tells us that he never leaves us. He never forsakes us. And I don't know about you, but for me, that makes him worthy. I think sometimes we, we think of the goodness of God and we say, oh, I'm going to worship him because he did X, Y, and Z. I'm going to worship him because, oh, they were healed. I'm going to worship him because it, it turned in my favor. Now, I'm not, I know God is capable of all that and then some. But do you want to know the real goodness of God? That even in the middle of it, he's with you. Listen, even with your pillow soaked with tears, he's with you. The Bible says he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And it's in the hardest times of life that we get to really experience the true character and true nature of who God is. So don't let your circumstance, don't let your worry run you away from worshiping the King. Let whatever you're facing, let it run you to the King. I don't know about y'all, but I'm just so determined that no matter how bad it gets, what it looks like, I've got a hallelujah in my spirit. I've got a thank you, Jesus. I don't care what it looks like or what they say. God, you've been good. You've been faithful. And you are worthy of my praise. Can we lift a shout to the King tonight?
If we're not careful, the longer you're in church, you can kind of forget the whole purpose of the whole thing. Uh, we've been doing this for 10 years now. I mean, this Friday will be our 10 year anniversary. It's like a big deal, but it's not worth it. It's a big deal though. And uh, I had this, when I spent some time away this summer, I had this rejuvenated, just why are we doing this? Like another campus, another like ministry, another worship night, another, like what are we doing all this for? And then I was like, well, we do it to reach people. Like, there's so many people that are, need Jesus. And then I was reminded, that's not why we do it. Like, the church, we don't exist to reach people. Now, that's, that's hard for us to hear because we're, like, so driven towards, like, we got to reach lost people. And I get it. But that's not what we were created. We were created to give Him worship, to give Him glory. We were created to offer our lives as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to the Lord. So we as a church exist for worship. And the reason our mission exists is because worship doesn't. And the more we go out and reach people, the more we can get them saved and see them get filled with the Holy Spirit and transformed. And then they get to walk into their purpose which is again, not to be just part of church, but is to, to worship. Because I know some of your stories. <laughs> I'm just going around this room. It's like a giant family reunion. Every time I ever, last night and tonight, I'm like having a hard time in worship, just giving everybody hugs. Because I know your story. You were lost away from God. But man, God used this church or used somebody to reach you. And let me remind you of your purpose. Your ultimate purpose in life is not even to reach somebody else. It's to give him praise and worship in everything that you do. So, Courtney, we were about 60% of the way there. And I don't think he deserves 60% of our effort tonight. I think he saved you 100%. So I think we just need to go a little bit wilder and a little bit crazier. And so we're going to go back to that bridge, I don't know, the all the earth part, ready? And I want us to go a little crazy because I want to remind you that we exist to give Him glory and give Him worship. And so I want us to bring Him the best praise and the best, the best worship. Come on, He's worthy of all of it. Let's sing it out.
nothing like being at Revival Night at Radiant Church. You fought the traffic, you parked illegally, but you got here. Come on, somebody. To God be the glory. It's going to be a good night. How many loved what God did last night? Come on, somebody. Tonight's going to be really, really, really special. And um, uh, don't leave early. Um, it's going to be a good night. We're, we're excited about it. Hey, we're a big family here. So let's take about 15, 20 seconds. Turn around. Greet someone. Give them a kiss on the cheek. Make them feel loved tonight. Welcome to Radiant Revival. If we haven't met you yet, I'm Ryan and I am your North Tampa location pastor. And I'm Garrett, your East St. Pete location pastor. And I hope that you all have been enjoying this week, that you're leaning into the Lord. And if it's your first night joining us at Radiant Revival, welcome. We are so glad that you are here. At Radiant Church, our mission is to move people towards Christ, towards community, and towards calling. And we do that a number of ways. One way we move towards community is through groups. Which, if you haven't heard, groups are live. So if you'd like to join a group, you can go to weareradiant.com slash groups. Here at Radiant, we have three lanes of groups. We have core groups, community groups, and curriculum groups. And if you want to find out more details about Radiant groups, we'll have group directors in the lobby to answer any of your questions. And they can help you find the right group that's for you. Absolutely, and we've seen so much life change happen through our Radiant groups, and here's just one story of someone who was impacted by our church-wide curriculum group called Foundations. Check this out. When I was younger, my mom was going to the Kingdom Hall of Jehovah's Witnesses. When I was born, she started bringing me up in that. I moved to Tampa about two and a half years ago. So when I moved down, I strayed away from going to the Kingdom Hall. So I wasn't going to any of the meetings or the services anymore. But I was very much living in the world. I got to the point where the partying and the drinking and all of those things that seemed so fun in the moment just weren't filling that space, that hole. I knew there was just something missing. A friend of mine, she invited me to church she said the Clearwater campus for Radiant is launching and I really want to go. I went and it was a bit intimidating for me because I had never stepped into another church before that wasn't the Kingdom Hall of Jehovah's Witnesses. I just remember being so in awe. Everybody was so welcoming. My best friend, she ended up leading foundations that semester and she asked me to join her table. I really enjoyed that and it was the end of the first semester. Everybody was talking about the date that they got saved and I started to cry because I was like, I don't know if I've been saved. I almost felt this sense of not being worthy enough to be saved. Erin, who sat at my table, looked at me and she just asked me a couple of questions. And she asked me if I believe that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and that he rose three days later. And I sat there and confidently said yes. So that was my official save date, everybody called it. And everybody cheered and whooped and everybody had a great time. I got baptized in April. It was one of the best moments of my life. If you're nervous to join, a small group or to join the community, just take the leap because everyone, I promise you, is excited to learn about you and to pray for you and to be there for you during the good and the bad times and to just live life with you. Come on, can we give God praise for that story? What an amazing, amazing story. I love how God is in the business of saving people, and, um, and, and part of that happens in community. So if you are not in a small group, you can be, and we would love to have you in a group here at Radiant. And so our groups, um, they're, they're open online right now. You can still sign up. We still have some spots available, so you can jump into a group. Um, but let me challenge you with a couple things, and then they actually start next week. So we have groups for um, our all the way middle school, high school. We have actually a foundations program for kids called Epic, which is a very program you want to be part of. So if you got kids, you want to get them grounded in the faith, that's a big deal. Um, if you've not gone through foundations, you need to go through foundations. It's a, it's a year-long program 
that we have developed. We wrote the curriculum. We worked on it for years here at Radiant. And, um, and it is really special. If you want to go through that, we have it at every one of our campuses. And if they say they're full, they're just lying to you. You can show up. And no, don't, don't just show up. Get in a group. Write your location, Pastor. We'll get you in a group. Um, we want to see you in that. And then we have tons of men's groups, women's groups, couples groups. Um, my wife is leading an awesome Bible study. I think the Tuesday night's full, but the Wednesday morning, which for some of you, uh, maybe some stay-at-home moms that they have, they have uh, child care for Wednesday morning for you for that. That's, that's group. And then um, I lead a lot of the men's uh, business Bible studies. So if, you, if you're a business leader, we're actually doing a breakfast this Thursday morning. So you'll be here late Wednesday night, Thursday morning, come to the Heights at 7 a.m. We're doing a breakfast. I'm speaking at it with one of our trustees. It's just a great time for our business leaders, men and women, to gather together um, to do that. So get in a group. That's the word from God. Y'all good? Come on, it's awesome what God does in life change in the context of relationship. Hey, I want to um, encourage you in our generosity tonight. Um, if you weren't here last night, you kind of heard the vision of this week. This, this whole event was, is in our budget. We've underwritten this event for the, the church because of your radical generosity. We're able to put this stuff on. But um, we have a huge opportunity as a church right now to invest in these three buildings that are under construction. Um, two of them opened last Sunday, and there's still a lot of work to be done. We had a grand opening for our Clearwater location. Come on to God, be the glory there. God gave us that property, and uh, it's just a miracle deal. We've been able to invest a couple million dollars into that property, and then, and then our West St. Pete location opened. Come on to God, be the glory. It's, it's remarkable, and um, I got an update today. We are getting close. Um, just pray for the, the, the favor with the city when it comes to our, our North Tampa location. We're, we're a couple months away. We're going to get in that. By the year end, we will be in that building, to God be the glory. That's an 18 and a half acre piece of property that God gave us in an unbelievable area. And uh, all of this is being done debt-free, to God be the glory. We are going into our 10-year anniversary with zero debt as a church. I mean, uh, uh, just remarkable what God's done. But um, I told you last night, I said, uh, a couple weeks ago, I announced the vision of the church, and I said, we've invested about $6 million into this property, into these properties, and we're about $566,000 away from being done, paid for it full. Uh, that number last night was about $200,000. Now it's about $160,000. To God be the glory. We're going to believe God. By the end of the week, we're going we're gonna to believe by the end of this week, we're going to go into our 10-year anniversary with all of it paid for, to God be the glory. It's going to be awesome. The Ark of the Covenant, where God's presence was in the Old Testament, was taken from Jerusalem when it was raided, and it was uh, put in another town, and they, they go to take the Ark, and they go to take it and to bring it back when David was in charge. He, his whole commission was, let's get the Ark back in Jerusalem. Let's get the presence of God back to where it belongs. But the people mishandled it. And when they mishandled it, they fumbled. And you probably heard the story. They fumbled in with the ark and they went out to reach out to grab it. And when they grabbed it, the person was killed right there. So everybody freaked out and it went into the house in Obed-Edom for three months. And while it was in the house of Obed-Edom, his house was blessed. Because wherever the presence of God is, you're blessed. It's just a remarkable thing. That's where the fullness of joy is. That's where your, your purpose is. But David wasn't happy. He said, no, I want the presence of God back in Jerusalem, back where it belongs. And so they had a significant way to experience the presence of God going where it needed to go. And I want to show you this because it's a verse I live by. It says, when those who were carrying the ark of the, of the Lord took six steps, they would pause and they sacrificed a bull and a fattened lamb. So I want you to see the picture. We're going to bring the presence of God, but we're not going to bring it casually. We're going to bring it with every six steps, sacrifice. Six steps, sacrifice. I've used it as a model for my life that every season in my life that I want God to move me forward, it's marked by a moment of sacrifice. By the way, I think it's significant to the tithe, by the way. There's six days of work, and then you come on Sunday, and you do what? You sacrifice, because the sacrifice opens you up to the next season that God has for your life. So I, I'm, I'm just telling you in this, if you've never learned the art, the, the discipline, the faith exercise of sacrificial giving, you're missing out. 
because there is, there, there is places God wants to bring you. And I'm telling you, it just doesn't open up until you go, okay, God, I'm going to sacrificially give. And I've seen it with our church when we had d- tough seasons and difficult seasons. It's in those tough seasons I'm going, okay, God, where's a missionary? Where's a church planner? Where's somebody that I can give into? Because I know when we give into it, it unlocks something in this next season. So I'm going to challenge you on this. Maybe this is your sixth step. And you've gone all out in worship, you've gone all out, you get joined a group, you've gotten baptized, or maybe you're getting baptized on Sunday, but you've never honored God with sacrificial giving. There's no greater place to give it than right now into seeing a harvest into North Tampa and Clearwater and West St. Pete and what God's going to do in your church. So we're going to give generously tonight, and we're going to see this need met. But more than that, I'm going to see your life open up to the fullness that God has for you. So there's multiple ways you can give. If you need an offering envelope, our team's running down the aisle real quick, and they're going to help you out. We're going old school offering envelopes. Come on, you're going to wave that gift to the Lord. No, we're not going to do that. But but this is revival night, and revival night means, listen, we're going to offer God something that costs us something. We're going to offer a life right now of worship to him in our giving. So I'm going to challenge you. Don't live this Christian life without moments of significant sacrifice. I've seen it in my life. When you give, I'm telling you, God will open the windows of heaven over you. I've just seen it happen time and time again. I'm giving you a second because I know you're preparing to give. Let's ask the Lord. I like being, I, people said it like, are, are, you, are you a strategic giver? Or like, how do you do it? I, I like being a spirit-led giver. I like doing, Holy Spirit, what are you telling me to do? What, what is that sacrifice that I'm to offer to you, God, tonight? And maybe, maybe you've kind of pulled back in your life. I would try to press in tonight and watch how God will bless your life. He's faithful to it. Is there anybody that can testify the faithfulness of God? I mean, just, he's good, isn't he? So good. I'm going to pray for you. Lord, speak to us. Let us be sacrificial givers. Lord, we thank you for these buildings you've given us. It's not even about the buildings. It's the fact that a location in West St. Pete that we didn't even know was possible six months ago. Lord, now with over 600 people attending there on Sunday, hearing the gospel, it's about people being reached. It's about young people who are far from you that are coming back to the faith. It's about people whose marriages have fallen apart, but God, you're getting right in the middle of it. Lord, we thank you that you're restoring and you're reviving people. Lord, I pray specifically for somebody that's right now even watching online and they've just pulled back completely from church. They've they've kind of just strayed away. They've gone, I'm just gonna do this thing on my own. You're even convicting their heart right now. It's time to sacrifice again, not just in your giving, but in your time of living a life completely laid down to God. Lord, we submit ourselves to you right now. Whatever you wanna do in our lives, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody that believes it says... Hey, there's multiple ways you can give. You can give, uh, put a multiple ways. You can give right here um, in the service through a tithing envelope. There's buck, There's bins on the way out. We're not passing buckets or anything. So you just bring it on the way out. And then you can give online. Click the legacy under whatever campus you go to. And if you don't go to a campus at Radiant Church, that's okay. Just click it to West St. Pete. Come on, Pastor Jordan. You know what I'm talking about. I'm just trying to help the Howergers out. No, I'm just joking. Give it to South Tampa. We need it. Come on, somebody. Love you guys. We have the most generous church in America. It's unbelievable. Y'all ready? You good? Give to God tonight. And as you give to God tonight, let's continue to worship. If we can't, let's stand to our feet. Oh, Jesus, we love you. Oh. 
Come on, Radiant Church. He's worth it, amen? Stay standing tonight. Buckle your seatbelts. It's probably, I don't know, 15 years ago, I got introduced to Javen Chavez, and he is... Um, he is a preacher preacher and he's got a word for our church he's uh he's no stranger he's been around radiant before and uh he's a he's a genuine friend but he's someone that genuinely he loves jesus loves the local church and i, I love what god's doing in his life him and his wife planted a church in um sin city it's las vegas nevada and i'm telling you we when you look at difficult places to plant a church Las Vegas is one of those, and uh, he took a gamble. Come on, somebody, and and, uh, and uh, we we love what they're doing, um, and uh, I'm excited about what God's building through their ministry in Las Vegas. When when churches are shutting their doors, they're adding services, and just God's doing. And um, I'm just pumped about how God's using them. He preaches all over the world, and then he's building a local church. And um, I was in prayer this today, and the Lord challenged me to just say we need as radiant needs to invest in your building so we uh we got a check for ten thousand dollars to invest into city light in vegas and we just want you to know we love you we're behind you can y'all honor Jamin chavez as he brings the word tonight the man of god hey wow Oh man, $10,000 introductions are my favorite introductions. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, I'm so honored to be here and uh, I'm, I'm grateful for this invitation. I, I love your pastor so much. Uh, pastor Aaron is, is really the best and just to see what, you know, we were like, we were crazy. Like, you don't know that about us. Like, we would roll on the floor and wave flags at people. And we had super soakers full of anointing oil. Like, that's our background. Still who we are. We just, we try to hide it now and act like we're cool. Um, but God's hand has always been on him. And he's always had such a special gift and grace but I'm so excited because now the whole world is starting to find out about him and about you and about what God the gift that is in his life with the book with the church with everything and man I, I celebrate you I love you and I am very 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 honored that you would invite me I, I you know I saw a little Instagram post today of who's preaching and I'll just tell you I don't belong here I just don't, and I, I always I kind of laugh every every time I hop on an airplane and I go, I don't know, they must have got me confused with somebody else. I don't know what, I don't know who they thought they were getting, but I'm so honored to be here in one of the greatest churches in America, one of the greatest pastors. Let's let Pastor Aaron Burke know that we love him. I love you, bro, so much. I celebrate you. Okay, it's re is it revival? Is that what we're doing tonight? Is that what's happening? I have a four. Y'all know chords? Is that okay? All my life you have been faithful. Let's sing that. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am made. Oh, I will sing of the goodness. I got I just gotta sing this. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire, and in darkest night, you were close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God. Oh, 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 oh. and all my life you have been faithful. That's my testimony. 
testimony. Come on. All my life you have been so, so with every breath. Yeah, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness, your goodness is running out, running out to me. Oh, oh. it's running out to me. Yeah. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running. Oh, it's running out. Say it again. Say it again. Say your goodness is running out. Over and over again. With my life laid down, with my life laid down, I surrender now. Give you everything. Your goodness is running out. Oh, it's running out to me. Woo! Oh, my. Mexican in me. I got a little, I got a little, this iglesia is pulling it out of me right now. I'm just feeling, I feel it a little Pentecostal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Calm down. Thank you, Lord. I'm so grateful for his faithfulness. I'm so grateful for his faithfulness. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. Come on, clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. All right, high five uh, 15 or 16 people, not more than 16. Tell them you're looking good tonight. And I'm gonna try to preach. Thank you, maybe a piano, one of you guys. Wow, hey. Sis over here with the vocal, y'all know that's a hymn, right? I surrender all. And she started singing the verse. I went, she ain't gonna sing the chorus that high. She don't have it in her. And then she did it. Where is she? Where's that girl at? 
I feel like, I feel like you were, I feel like you were showing off. I just feel like, I thought, are they going to hand it to a guy to sing it lower? Oh, she's, oh, you're going to do it like that. On a Tuesday night, that's not fair. Felt like she was establishing dominance in the room. Like, I was like, okay. Unbelievable. Okay, okay, let's go to the word. Let's go to the word. Y'all are distracting me. We're going to look at uh, 1 Kings 17. 1 Kings 17. It is... um, an honor to pastor uh, City Light Church in Vegas, and we just celebrated five years. And I'm so um, I'm so excited. We just uh, f- passed 13,000 salvations uh, in the last five years. So to God be the glory. And uh, we're in a real special season. I'm honored to be here. We we broke ground in May on our building, and so um, uh, this. Seed is a massive blessing, and um, it will all be used for ministry as we um, build God a house in in Las Vegas. This is 1 Kings 17, verse 8. Then the Lord said to Elijah, go and live in the village of Zarephath near the city of Sidon. I've instructed a widow there to feed you. So he went to Zarephath. And as he arrived at the gates of the village, he saw a widow gathering sticks. And he he asked, would you bring me a little water in a cup? And as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, and and bring me a bite of bread too. I love that. That's the most bro move. That's the most guy scripture in the Bible. Like, babe, can you get me a sandwich, babe, while you're up? Babe, babe. (laughs) Every wife in here is like, "Mm mm-hmm. She said, I swear by the Lord your God, I I don't even have a single piece of bread in the house, and I only have a handful of flour and a jar of cooking oil in the bottom of this jug. I was just gathering sticks, watch this, to cook this last meal, then my son and I were going to die. But Elijah said to her, don't be afraid, go ahead and do just what you've said, but but make a little bread for me first. Now, it's amazing, because Elijah did not say, make one big piece of bread, cut it three ways, and we'll all have a piece because that wouldn't have required faith. Uh, This to me is one of the most beautiful pictures of an offering because I am, I'm sowing before I see the manifestation of my miracle. And I'm, I'm believing that while I'm doing what God's called me to do, that a miracle is happening in the kitchen. Now don't worry, I ain't gonna talk about giving tonight, but I had to just throw that in. Then, then use what's left, use what's left to prepare a meal for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, there will always be flour and olive oil left in your container. Always, always, always. Until the time the Lord sends rain and the crops grow again. They were in famine. They were, they were in drought. But God, God has a way of famine proofing his people. People. God has a way of drought proofing his people. God has, God does not ask the weather for permission to bless you and to provide for you. So she did as Elijah said, and Elijah and her and her whole family, family started showing up at the house, uh, continued to eat for many days. There was always enough. This, this is our testimony. Always enough. Flour and olive oil left in the containers, just as the Lord had promised. I want to look at verse 12 really quick and, and we'll pray. She says, she says, man of God, I'm going to eat this last meal and me and my son are going to die. And it was here that God's prophetic voice entered the conversation and would change her life and her family forever. And I want to talk from this idea tonight. It's not over. It's not over. It's not over. Will y'all help me preach a little bit tonight? Give somebody a give somebody a high five around you. Tell them it's not over. It's not over. It's not over. It's not over. Don't even look at them since they're your second choice, but just elbow them and tell them it's not over. It's not over. Look at your elbow, your second choice. It's not over. It's not over. Thank you, Lord, that it's not over. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Take a quick break. 
whatever you guys do in the back and a couple of minutes, we'll see you in a little bit. <laughs> I'm from Vegas, man. I'm sorry. Just my mind wanders. It's like smoke break. I don't know what, I don't know where he's going. I don't know where that guy's going. This looks, he looks like a vapor a little bit, you know, he just, no, he does it, he does it, he does it. It's like the ultimate insult. Do you vape? Because you just kind of have that vibe. All right. I'm kidding. He doesn't. He doesn't, and he doesn't look like that. Okay. Um, <laughs> I love a laughy church. It's so hard for me, though. Usually, you know, sometimes people don't like to laugh, and so you're trying to crack jokes and stuff like that, like dies right at the altar. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> Prophets in Scripture are seers. They're, they're seers. Really cool little little name there, little description there that God gives his prophets in the Old Testament. They're, they're my seers. God would help the prophets to see, and then the prophets would help the people to see. God would, would, um, would bring his prophets around him, and he would ask Jeremiah this question in Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah, what, t- tell me, what do you see? What do you see? And then Jeremiah would tell the people what he saw. So prophets help the people to see what God is doing and to hear what God is saying. This is a huge blessing for the people of God. It's absolutely unfair to be a Christian because you don't have to live by these eyes alone or these ears alone, but you get to hear God and you get to see what God is doing. You don't have to live by the natural alone. You don't have to just stare at your mountain. You don't have to just stare at the circumstance, but you're able to get a word from God that leads you. You're able to get a vision from God that leads you. And though you might be in a battle and though you might be in a fight and though you might be staring at a giant or staring at a mountain, you, you are able to see beyond the natural. This is, this is the blessing of being a child of God. This was Elisha's prayer, the, the son of Elijah, he, he's surrounded by an enemy and Elisha's servant runs up to him and says, my Lord, my Lord, we're, we're surrounded by our enemies. Do something. And I think that Elisha's servant Gehazi thought he would pray a prayer of Lord help or Lord send help or Lord we need a miracle or I don't know what, what he thought he was going to pray, but Elisha's prayer was very unique. Elisha said, Lord, Open my servant's eyes. Open his, he's got a vision problem. Uh, He can see with these eyes, but he can't see with his spirit. God, show him that there's more for us than those who are against us. Let him know that we are surrounded by, by the angels of God, that there is an army surrounding that army, that there are more for us than those who are against us, that there is a God who is fighting for us that we cannot see with our natural eyes. God, open his eyes, and when his eyes were open, and his confidence was lifted and when you get a vision and when you get a word and when you get a dream you can make it through anything because God becomes more real to you than your mountain Helen Keller said there's something worse than not having the ability to see it's living a life with sight but without vision so God help me to see but by the way that's why you want a passionate worshiping prophetic pastor who's just like a little bit radical who makes you a little uncomfortable that's what you want because you want a pastor that's seeing from a different realm you don't just want a CEO or an organizational leader, though he's great at all that stuff. You don't want just uh, a, a guy that, that can play the part. That, that's cool. But you don't want a pro in the pulpit. You want a prophet in the pulpit. Because when you're going through it, you need somebody to help you see. And when you're going through it, you need a word from God. And when you're facing a battle, you need to know that God is with you and God is for you. That's why I, I'm, I'm grateful for a radical pastor. I'm grateful for a radical staff. I'm grateful for a worshiping campus pastor. Come on, somebody who's, who's going to help me in every season. So Elijah comes and he, 
He helps the woman to hear and to see. And I want to I just give you a few things tonight. Firstly, you have to see your future. You got to see your future and you got to see it differently than you've been looking at it. Here's how she saw her future. I'm going to eat this meal and die. Wow. Put that on your dream board, huh? <laughs> I got one last meal, prophet, and I'm dead, and my family's dead. It's over. That's what she thought. That, that was her picture of her tomorrow. By the way, she didn't know that. Hello? Did it just get quiet in here? She didn't know that. She assumed that. Because fear always assumes the worst. She didn't know that was going to be her last meal. She, she didn't know that was going to be the last thing she would ever eat. She didn't know she was going to die that day. She didn't know she was going to die tomorrow. She didn't know she was going to die in the famine. But, but, but fear takes on the worst assumption. See, fear doesn't usually feel like terror or fright. The spirit of fear feels like intimidation. It feels like depression. It feels like, it feels like I'm going to die. Fear feels like death. Hoping that you die before you die. I know this uh, to be true because I've had two instances in my life where I've walked into an ER. And I walked in, went to the front desk. I said, hi, um, I'm dying. I'm having a heart attack. Help. And they freak out. I don't, know if you've, I don't know if you've ever seen this scene. It's a scene. They freak out. They get you to the back. They start taking your blood. They start doing all these tests. They put all these things on you. Uh, I mean, it's, it's mayhem for like 15 minutes. And then all of a sudden they disappeared. <laughs> I'm just sitting there with all this stuff on me. My shirt open. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'm not dying because it's been an hour. <laughs> sure enough, doctor walks in. Hey, uh, Hey, Mr. Chavis, I got good news and bad news. The good news is you're not having a heart attack. You're fine. Everything's good. What's going on? I feel like I'm dying. I feel like there is a gorilla sitting on my chest. I feel, I feel like I can't breathe. What is that? And he goes, well, it's depression. You're having a panic attack. You're not having a heart attack. You're having a panic attack. But I didn't feel panicked. I didn't, I didn't feel fearful in that way. I felt like I was going to die. I felt like this is my last meal. I felt like today's my day. I felt like I gave it a good shot in Vegas, but I guess that's it. That's what fear feels like. It feels like oppression. It feels like depression. It feels like, I guess I tried and I guess it didn't work. I've been in a famine, going to die in a famine. Been hungry, going to die hungry. Been this way, always going to be this way. What yesterday was is what tomorrow will be. That's what it feels. It feels like dread. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And by the way, if you're feeling that tonight, and you're going, oh my gosh, that's me. I got really good news for you. I've come to help you see tonight. I've come to help you here tonight. I've come to lift that thing off of your shoulders tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, you're going to sleep tonight. You're going to eat tonight. You're going to wake up happy tomorrow because God's going to lift that thing off of you. Jesus said, the, the New Testament teaches that there are two prevailing spirits in the world in the last days. The first is a spirit of fear. Luke 21, the people, they're going to be terrified. This is Luke 21, 26. The people are going to be terrified. There's just a, an overall dread in the world. We're, we're living in it. We're seeing it. We're, we're exposed to bad news 24 hours a day. And so there's wars and rumors of wars and there's pestilence and there's pandemics and there's this and there's that and it's constant fear, right? That I, I love you if you work for a news station, but like, you know, the news doesn't make their money on good stories, right? Like, you're not gonna turn on CNN and there's Anderson Cooper like, hey, we just saved a kitty up in the tree. There's still good people out there. No, that's not what it's gonna be. You're not gonna turn on Fox News and I don't even know who's on Fox News anymore, but someone's going to, you know, I was going to say Tucker, but he's not. You're not going to turn on Tucker on Twitter and Tucker's going to be there going, hey, you know, just, man, it's a beautiful day. It's 80 degrees. Feels great. No, no, no. 
it's, it's all bad news all the time. Now, I'm not trying to, I tried to offend everybody just now. I hopefully I did a good job, Republicans and Democrats. Now you both hate me. Awesome. So my, my point is, we're, the news is not news anymore. The news is terror in, a, in an addiction that, and we can't get enough of it. It's where we, it's, it's the prevailing spirit of the day. And you go, well, there's a lot to be afraid of. Yeah, there is, but that's my point. There is a, there is a constant stream of fear in our world. That, that is the prevailing spirit of the world. But there is another spirit, thank God. And the scripture says he is the Holy Spirit. Unique altogether, all by himself spirit. Uh, entirely by himself. In, in other words, even though I'm in the world, I'm not of the world. I'm not denying where I'm. I'm in Tampa, but I'm in the spirit. I'm in Florida, but I'm in the, I'm in Sin City, but I'm in the spirit uh, because, because I'm living by a different spirit than what's going on all around me. I'm living by the Holy Spirit. And Acts chapter 2 verse 17 says, in the last days, this is a last day scripture we should preach about more, that in the last days I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And by the way, here's what happened. Here's how you know you've been filled with the Holy Ghost. He's going to change how you talk. You're going to start prophesying. Now, I grew up in Pentecost. Prophecy for us was a microphone down here. It was always available. It was always on. (laughs) And Sister Henrietta always had a word. Amen. For I say unto thee. (laughs) And it was always in King James. She didn't talk in King James any other day of the week. But on Sundays, hey, she talked in King James. It was great. But let me go a little further. Prophecy is not you speaking in King James. Prophecy is future talk. Prophecy is God talk. Prophecy is getting a word from the word about your life. Prophecy is speaking from God's view, not your view. God's view, not the devil's view. God's view, not culture's view. God's view, not your fear's view. You get a word from God. It's not denial. It's not hype. It's real. It's prophetic. You get a future. Talk about yourself so you're not looking at your life going, I'm going to die. You look at your life and go, I'm going to live in the name of Jesus. Jesus, with long life, God's going to satisfy me. I will be healed. My family will come back to God. God can restore my marriage. My business can prosper. God's bigger. God's higher than inflation. God's bigger than that interest rate. God's greater than the economy. God's mightier than the wave of culture. I got a word. Somebody say amen. amen. And, and, and you're not just going to get a word. What, what's next? And then we're going to get dreams and visions. We get, we get God pictures. You, you look at your family and they look different because you see them now through the lens of the dream, not through the lens of fear. You can see your husband through the lens of vision, not through the lens of disappointment. You can see your business through the lens of the dream, not through the lens of of the economy right now. You can can see beyond and you go, that's just denial. No, it's not denial, it's hope. You're just denying the mountain. No, I'm actually talking to the mountain. I'm not denying that Goliath is right in front of me. I just believe that I, I serve a God who's greater. I... I believe that he comes at me with a sword and spear, but I come at him in the name of the Lord. I'm in covenant with God. God is for me, and if God is for me, who can be against me? And I might be in hell right now, and I might be in the valley of the shadow of death right now, but I will fear no evil because his rod and his staff, they comfort me. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me. And this valley is not my final destination. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I think we ought to take a praise break. Come on. On a Tuesday night, revival night, God is for you.
This is not your last chapter. This is not the end of your story. This is not the final chapter of your book. What you've been in is not what you'll always be in. The famine is not final. Be seated. You're scaring all the new people that we invited. You're scaring everybody. Who told you it'd always be this way? Who told you it's over? Who told you that just because you've been in a famine, you're always going to be in a famine? No. I'll never judge my future by yesterday. The devil's into permanence. The devil's into it's been this way, which means it will always be this way. And he'll try to get you to believe that. So now you judge every day and every season and every opportunity based on the disappointment of yesterday. And she's going, I've been in a famine. And I'm going to die in a famine. But our God has a way of turning it. God has a way of resurrecting it. God has a way of flipping the plan of the enemy on his head. God has a way of doing miracles, a way of doing the impossible. This is our God. Number two, you got you to gotta see your calling. You got to see your calling. Uh, Elijah, it, it, go to Zarephath because, because I've commanded a widow there. I've commanded a widow there. Now, if you were to just read that verse, you would think that Elijah's going to walk into the city. He's going to see the woman and she's going to go, oh, OMG, it's you. <laughs> right? Like you're the guy. You're, I was in prayer. And the Holy Ghost told me a prophet's coming. He, he already commanded me. No, that's not what happened. She didn't know who he was. I'll, I'll go a step further. God never talked to her. God talked to the prophet and she had to trust that God was speaking. And I think the reason that maybe we could find some clarity in the text is because this word commanded isn't probably the best Hebrew to English translation. That's probably not the best word they could have found. A better word in the Hebrew language was, Elijah, go to that village because I've appointed a widow there. I've, I've set apart for special use a woman there. She's called and doesn't even know it. She thinks she's going to die, but she's actually been anointed. She thinks there is no hope for her family, but I've actually chosen her for special use. Because, because if I can get her in the right atmosphere under a prophetic spirit, she will respond to the prophetic anointing. That, by the way, that's why you shouldn't miss a night this week. Because you, you never know when the light bulb's going to turn on. You never know when you're going to go, that was my word. You're never, you never know when you go get, catch the vision. You never know when you're going to write down the God idea. You, nev you never know you're appointed and you're anointed and you're chosen for special use, but she had to be in the atmosphere of the prophetic to be able to hear something that she could not hear before that moment, see something that she could not see before that moment, and do something that she could not do before that moment. She was anointed and didn't know it. And I want to look at a lot of people right now that are anointed. You didn't even know it. Hopeless, fearful, depressed, tired, thinking about giving up. But you're actually anointed. It's actually all of that brokenness that God's about to use. <laughs> it's actually all of those emotions that God is about to sanctify and anoint. And he's going to give you a heart for people because you've gone through hell, but you made it. And now you're going to help people get through hell. And you're thinking about quitting, but God's pouring his oil on you tonight. You're thinking about giving up, but God's calling you out tonight. You're thinking this is your last meal, but God is actually prepared. I'm anointed and don't even know it. I'm called and don't even know it. Can I say it like this? She was as anointed as Elijah. Because there was an oil on Elijah that she needed, but there was an oil that he needed. So let me say it like this. I need you. I need you. I need you for real. I really do. 
I didn't, I didn't grow up that way, right? I grew up, again, I grew up in Pentecost. So in Pentecost, it was like, if you leave this church, God gonna get you. <laughs> Your fridge gonna break, tires gonna blow out on the freeway. God's going to give you leprosy on your left elbow if you leave this anointing. No, I actually, we, uh, we actually need you. We need your faith. We need, we, need, we need the oil that's on you. Why do I got to be in a small group? Because you have an oil. Why do you want me to serve? Because you have an anointing. Why are you, why are you pushing for kids ministry? Because we need you in there because there's actually a gift. Y'all trying to get a raise tonight? Because... Because there's an oil on your life. There's a gift and a grace on your life. I'm just holding a baby. No, there's an anointing on you. I'm just checking in a family. No, there's a grace on you. I'm just, I'm just parking car. No, there's something on your life. I'm just going to a small group. It's kind of weird. They're going to make me take my shoes off when I walk in the house. Maybe wear clean socks. But there's, you have a story, widow. You have a story, man. You have a story, sir. You have a story, lady. You have a story, ma'am. You have something on you where God sustained you through a famine, and we need your oil in this house. Is this church too big? Am I ever going to get plugged in? Yes. You might have to work a little harder than a church of 20 people, but we need your anointing. And by the way, since my blood pressure's up, you need an anointing. Ooh, y'all kind of sound like Vegas there. You kind of push back on me, huh? Because see, on the West Coast, we don't believe we need church. Because on the West Coast, we go, I am the body of Christ. I am, I am the church. The church is not a building. I watch online. Um, you need a pastor. And I'm not it. Because when you're in the hospital, I ain't coming. You need a man of God. You need a woman of God. You need to connect to a house. I, I, I suggest Radiant. I think this is the place that you should be. And when your anointing and his anointing get together, when the anointing that's on you and the anointing that's on this house get together, when your yes and the yes of this house get together, we become an unstoppable force that can carry a city through famine. Chosen for special use. Chosen for, she was called. Let me give you two names very quickly. We won't go deep in this because I preached way too long. But, but, let me, but let me talk about, let me talk about Victor Frankl and Sigmund Freud really quick. Victor Frankl and Sigmund Freud. Sigmund Freud believed, he was a brilliant philosopher and thinker. And uh, he, he believed that that really the whole purpose of man, the chief end of man, the chief pursuit of man was pleasure. Freud said what we really want is pleasure and we will do whatever we need to do and fight whatever we need to fight to get pleasure. And that's what he believed. But there was this other guy named Viktor Frankl who was actually a believer. Frankl said, no, it, it's actually not pleasure that we really want. We're actually craving purpose. But because we don't have purpose, we're medicating ourselves with pleasure. Nothing wrong with pleasure, but don't you dare worship it. Nothing wrong with being happy, but don't fall in love with it. Pa Paul talks about this. Huh? We're going to be lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, which means I can't love pleasure and love God. If God blesses me, cool, but I can't fall in love with it. How do I know I'm in love with it? You can't give it away. <laughs> I'm leaving in the morning. Relax. I'll, I'll buy your house, drive your car, get your boat. Amen. I don't care. But you better live with an open hand. Now, I want you to have a boat because I don't want a boat. But I want boat friends in every city in America. That's what I, that's my faith. I don't want to own a boat. I don't want the expense. I don't want to pay for the repairs. I want you to be blessed. I want you to buy a boat. And then I want you to let me borrow the boat 
when I preach in Tampa. Amen. But, but if I can't give it away, it owns me. I don't own it. And let me say something about pleasure and about possessions. And they'll never love you back. Go ahead and buy that boat and give it a beautiful female name. She ain't going to love you back. If I, if I can't give it, I love it. And if I love it, that means I can't love God because I don't have enough room in my heart for both. She, she could have ate her bread, watch, and died. She could have had her last meal. I'm making this kid on the front row. He's like, bread, mama. Do we need a feed? Do we need some over here? <laughs> Poor little two-year-old is like, <laughs> so painful. You know, the first time I ever, let me, now I just got to go there. First time I ever got saved, you know, it wasn't real, but it was communion. And I wanted that snack. And my mom said, you got to receive Jesus if you want that. So I said, Jesus, forgive me of my sin. And I took that. But that was, I didn't really get saved till I was 15, but that was when I was five. Amen. Okay, I just had to say that. But I got, but I got the communion. Um, she could have, she could have eaten the bread and died. She would have died happy, but with an empty soul. She would have had a full belly, but an empty heart. She would, have, she would have had her last meal, but she would have lost her family. Oh, what good is it if we gain the whole world and we lose our soul? And again, nothing wrong. Be blessed, please. Just don't let it own you because it'll never love you back. It'll never love you back. I'm more blessed than I ever thought I could be. And I'm, and I'm just telling you, I went, I went into this year, my 39th year, and I was, I'm turning 40 in October. And so as I turned 39, I felt like the Holy Spirit just said, you're too comfortable. You're just too comfortable. You love God and you love people and you love your wife, and, but you're just, you're just too comfortable. And we we're going to buy our dream house this year. That's what we were going to do. We're going to buy our little house, you know, on a golf course. And I was going to stare at the golfers and wave. And I had it all set. And the Lord said, you're way too comfortable. I said, I rebuke you, Satan, in the mighty name of Jesus of Nazareth, whom I love and whom I serve. And God said, no, it's me, bro. It's me, dog. And I said, well, I rebuke me then in the name of Jesus. And so I said, okay, Lord, well, what, what are you saying? So I fasted in January, and the Lord gave me a phrase. He said, radical generosity, radical harvest. I said, okay. And then I kept praying because I didn't really know what that meant. It was kind of like, it was like that. I was like, wow, cool. What are you trying to say? And he said, no honorariums this year. Everywhere you preach, you don't get a penny. Or you think it's quiet in here? You should have heard me tell my wife. Because <laughs> we were going to buy a house. The Lord said, no house this year. Because you love it too much. You don't even own it yet. You love that Zillow website more than you love the Bible right now. Every week. I... <laughs> Looking at homes that I can't afford. Looking at homes I'm dreaming about, coveting. So no dream house. And we're giving all that money to our building. And, and I, I'm, I'm going into 40 saying, money doesn't own me. And God, you owe me nothing. And God, I owe you everything. And God, to you, deserve all the glory and all the praise and, and nothing's going to own me. I will not be moved by a dollar. I will not be moved by a piece of bread. I will not be moved by lust. I will not be moved by opportunity. I will not be moved by the culture. I will not be moved. That's what I had to do because even preachers get comfortable. Lastly, we got to have the team come. I got to, I got to wrap it up. Lastly, you got to see the possibility. You got to see the possibility. See the possibility. So I don't know if you remember how the story starts. Um, Elijah walks into the city and says, hey, lady, give me a piece of bread. And her response is the truth. Here's her response. I don't have bread. 
She's telling the truth. She didn't have any bread. Uh, I, I have preached forever that God will never ask for something that you don't have. And I'm kind of disagreeing with myself. Because the Lord was demanding bread from her that she didn't have. Watch, watch, watch. She didn't have yet. But, but she had, she didn't have the miracle, but she had the ingredients for the miracle. And maybe you don't have exactly what God is demanding of you right now, but maybe if you looked around, you do have oil. And, and, and this is in that. And and that is in this. And so what I have to do is I have to give God this while I'm believing for that. I got to give God my oil while I'm believing for bread. Uh, I... I've discovered that what God is demanding of me is not my understanding. He's demanding my surrender. So I don't like, we're going to buy this house this year. We're not doing that. I didn't put on God. All right, God, I'm, I'm going to sow all this and then someone's going to give us a house. That is not where my faith is at. What a, what a weak harvest, honestly. I'm building God a house. So when I, when I come to a church like this and we don't ever talk, I'm, I've never asked for a penny anywhere I've ever gone ever. So when I, when I come to a church like this and, and y'all hand me $10,000, that's my harvest. But I had to give God my Yes. And when, and when God is asking something of me that seems beyond me, I don't say no, I give him what I do have. While I trust him for what I need. Because what God really wants from you is yes, that's all he wants. That's all he wants. I don't care if we're talking about your marriage, I don't care if we're talking about your money, I don't care if we're talking about your business, about your parenting, what, whatever it may be. All he wants is your yes. If you're single right now, he wants a yes. If you're married right now, he wants a yes. If you're a, if you're a billionaire, he wants your yes. If you're a hundred heir, amen, he wants your yes. If you're a, all God wants is, if you're willing and obedient, he said, I'll, I'll let you eat the good of the land. And I won't ask the economy's permission to make sure I feed you. Uh, on any level, about anything. So, John chapter 2. Um, Jesus comes to a wedding with his 12 friends. And uh, I, I don't know at what point it happened, but at, at some point Mary runs up to Jesus and says, they're out of wine. I don't know if that's ever hit you funny that she made it his problem. That might be my Vegas unsanctified self, but something in me goes, we had plenty of wine till those 12 hooligans showed up. We were good on wine till Judas started turning up. We were good on wine till Peter got a little crazy at the punch bowl, Jesus. So she makes it his problem. Jesus does not say, yo, Judas, go, go to Total Wine, grab a couple of cases, bring it back. He doesn't say that. Jesus does not say, Peter, Peter, go, go hit up all the, all the vineyards around town. Bring me some grapes. He doesn't say that. Jesus says, get me some water. I don't know anything about wine. I really don't. But I do know this. I know I cannot ferment that. I can't let that sit long enough. I can't let that hang long enough until that turns into red wine. This ain't turning into red wine. Unless I give it to Jesus. Because Jesus don't need 
what you need to give you what you need. Because some of you are believing for big things and you're going, but I don't even have a grape. Then give him your water. I don't have, I don't have any bread. Then give him your oil. I, I don't have a, my next meal. Then give him your flour. Give him what you do have and believe that he can do something out of almost nothing. Because this ain't turning into wine unless Almighty God gets his hands on it. And your life will not turn from water to wine unless you give your life to God. But if you would give your life to God, I have a question, Radiant Church. Can you see the wine in the water? Can you see the possibility in the impossibility? Can you see the miracle in your mundane? Can you see what God would do with a yes? See, see, uh, stay standing, stay standing. I, I feel more comfortable when people are standing when I'm preaching. When I get up here at the beginning of service and go, I don't belong here. I don't belong here. I'm from Belen, New Mexico, population 1700. There are more people here tonight than in my town. I'm from a trailer park. That's my, that's, that's where I'm from. I shouldn't be here. I don't belong here. but I gave God my water. I didn't have wine. I didn't have a pedigree. I didn't have a beautiful Bordeaux to hand to heaven. I didn't have a beautiful Napa cab to give to Jesus. I just had some water. And I said, if you'll take this water, I don't have a grape for you and I don't have bread for you. But if you will take this kid from a dairy town in the middle of New Mexico, which is a state in America. <laughs> Some of y'all like, you speak good English. No, it's America. It's America. He, he took me out of obscurity. He took me, the psalmist said, out of the dung heap, he lifted me. And it, it was a very broken, weak, insecure Yes. Oh, but God can do something with it. Yes. God, God can turn an impossible situation into a possible situation with a yes. I have to tell this story because I believe we're in, I believe we're in miracle territory. And I, I feel led to tell this story. And I even feel led to put this story into the spirit of your pastors and, and into your staff. Bob Schuler. The great Robert, Dr. Robert Schuler, who would, who would start the, eventually the Crystal Cathedral in Orange County, California. He lived in Iowa. And in 1955, Bob Schuler wrote to a friend in Orange County, California. And he said, will you please find me a venue? We're going to plant a church in Orange County. And then he gave him seven options. Maybe you could find a Jewish synagogue for us. Maybe a Seventh-day Adventist church for us. Maybe a church on a Sunday night. Maybe a school hall. Uh, maybe a bowling alley. Maybe a drive-in movie theater. Uh, may, and he, he listed off all of these different ways that maybe they could have church in Orange County. And Bob's friend wrote him back. And he said, Bob, this is Orange County. It, it, it's amazing that all those years ago, 70 years ago now, small thinking is small thinking. Yeah. 70 years ago, that man wrote Bob Schuler and said, Bob, this is Orange County. It is impossible to find a church venue in Orange County, California. And Bob opened that letter and he got ticked. So he grabbed his pen and he grabbed a piece of paper and he wrote, quote, impossible. What an irresponsible word, Bob. And he mailed the letter to his friend. Impossible. What an irresponsible word. We gonna have all these campuses in 10 years? Impossible. What an irresponsible word. 
God can't save my husband. Impossible. What an irresponsible word. My child will never serve God. What an irresponsible word. They told us we could never get pregnant. What an irresponsible word. God could never do that in Tampa. Maybe in Dallas. Maybe in Tulsa. That's impossible in Tampa. What an irresponsible word. Don't say impossible around the prophetic. Because the prophetic will look at that impossibility and say it's impossible with you. But with God, all things. I'm declaring miracle buildings into this house. That'd be good. No, no, no. I said miracle. Okay. No, no, no. See, you already missed it. Church is in a building. Okay. Let me talk to you, sis or bro or whoever you are. Every time we get property, listen to me. We take that acreage away from the devil I'm gonna run see see when we when we got that little Baptist church that acreage will never be a strip club it'll never be a dispensary it'll never be a liquor store Until Jesus comes back, that land is dedicated to the glory of God. It's called spiritual warfare. It's called taking dominion. So, so Paul says that, that our battle is against principalities, prince, rulers, palities, cities. Every city has princes every palady has princes but every time we buy land every time we start a new campus that prince loses that palady now I don't know if you know this but when we get land we get it to the center of the earth and we get it up to the heavens I don't know why I'm talking about this but I'm telling you radiant more buildings are coming more acreage is coming miracle money is coming impossible what an irresponsible word more souls more salvations more marriages more children more teenagers more healing because it isn't about a building but once we take that over, now the work can happen. Catch the vision. So you have a $140,000 need, let's just do it. Let's just knock it out. Some of you could do it. You're like, I could do a dollar. Do it, do a dollar. Don't, don't, look at the, don't look at the bread and go, well, I don't have $140,000. Give him some flour. Give him some oil. Give him some water. Do, be a part. Oh, cool, Aaron's taking offering. All right, let's check Instagram. It's not our moment to check social media. It's our moment to say, Holy Ghost, are we, am I supposed to be a part of taking some of this ground? Because I'm not receiving a second offering necessarily. But I'm telling you, all this is, it's, it's okay, I got to end with this. Elijah, I have a place of provision for you there. So the miracle was connected to a place. Just like that young woman who walked into that campus there. Just like some of you walked into this church there. It was, it was that campus. It was that seat. You'll never forget that row. You'll never forget that song. You'll never forget what your pastor was preaching. You'll never forget the songs that were singing when you gave your life to God. It happened there. And what we're doing is we're building God a place there, here in this city. It's not over. It's not over. I'm going to ask the prayer team to move uh, down to the front right now.
Number one, if you're feeling that dread tonight, that fear tonight, that, that I'm going to die thing, I'm, I'm begging you tonight in a moment to come down and receive prayer because it's going to lift off of you. In Jesus' name, like for real, it's going to feel like a weight came off of your shoulders. You're going to feel it happen tonight. There's going to be, there's going to be a change in your heart tonight. One. If you have children that are not currently serving God, I, I believe that there's a grace tonight to, to call them home. Remember that when she lost her hope, she also lost her hope for her kids. She, she had given up on her kids. Some of you have given up on your kids or, or you've just run out of fight for your kids. You just, you have no more fight left. You're going to get your fight back tonight because they're not going to die in this famine. They're not going to die in this cultural famine that we're in. Say amen, everybody. So we're going to sing. But if you need prayer tonight, I want to encourage you to receive prayer. If, if you need prayer about anything, I want you to come down. About anything. It doesn't have to be anything specific. If, if you don't need personal prayer, then I want to ask you this. Stay with us for a few moments and let's worship in this this prophetic atmosphere because I believe that this week is going to be a week of prophecy, a week of dreams, a, a week of visions, a week of God pictures, a week of God words for you. And so I don't want us to just rush out of here right away. It's, it's right at nine o'clock right now. Let's just take a few moments to just lean into the presence of God. The altars are open, but why don't we all lift up our hands? You can come down at any moment that you want to. I'm, I'm encouraging people tonight. Fear is going to leave you. This is a house of miracles. Come alive. Come alive. In the name of Jesus. Come alive. In the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We bring everything in the name of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus.
Raise it up tonight.
Come on. We are not going to rush what God is doing up here. So if you're still getting no. prayer, feel free to stay here for a minute. If you just made a decision to follow Jesus tonight, there's a QR code on the seat back of the seats. Fill that out and mark on there, I made a decision, because we want to resource you, because you are not doing this alone. We want to equip you and surround you with next steps and some resources to make sure you can get connected. Um, So if you're in the moment, stay here. If you made a decision, be sure to fill that out. How else can can they get connected? Yes, well, as we said earlier, that small groups, our signups are still happening. And so if you are in the room and, man, you had a moment with Jesus tonight and you haven't signed up for a small group, don't just let what happened right here in this room. Stay in this room. Take it into a small group. Get into a community. Do life with other people. We've got a booth on the way out. You can go and check out that booth. You can get plugged into a community tonight. We've got a team that's going to help you get plugged into that spot. And we will still have merch going on after service. You can buy, but this is my little two cents. If you're a parent in the room, pick up your kids first. Go get those kids. Because they they had a great time with Jesus, but they're capped out at about 9 o'clock. So go pick up your kids. We'll see you right back here tomorrow night. Don't miss night three. Y'all have a good night.